have seen so far is that the U.S. COVID case rates specifically has affected those in higher racial densities in the United States. For example, on the map on the left, we see the higher incidence of COVID cases along the South and Southeastern states, which corresponds to what we see on the right as the number of cases and number of African-Americans that live in the South and Southeastern portion of the United States. Additionally, looking at higher case rates in Arizona, we see a large contingency of Native Americans in that area in the Four Corners area. From California down through Texas, we also see a large population of Latinos. And so where numbers are increased, we do see higher rates for minorities in those areas. Most states have a three to five fold difference in the percent of population of African-Americans in those areas and the case deaths from COVID-19. We can see larger cities such as DC or New York had a three to five fold case rate for deaths to COVID, as well as other states that have had hotspots more recently. When we look further and uh, at plot lines, we also can more starkly see the changes in the percentage of African-Americans living in these states and the much greater percentage of the deaths due to COVID-19. We see these changes as well for Latino populations in each of those areas, but they're not to the extent that we've seen in the African-American community. What we recognize so far is that the comorbidities appear to be the most consistent indicator of severity of COVID infection and risk for death. A recent 2018 study showed that approximately 60% of residents in the United States had at least one chronic disease, 45% had at least two, and over 20% had four or more chronic diseases. So when we look at the US numbers for adults hospitalized with COVID, we actually see higher numbers in the population of those aged 40 to 64 although initially we felt that COVID-19 would be more problematic for those that were over 65. And we see hypertension, obesity, lung disease, diabetes, and cardiovascular diseases as the most common comorbidities for this disorder. The same no, uh, information that we've also seen in New York, where as many as 86% of those deaths in New York had at least one chronic disease. And that was the last information that we had from that hotspot, including the diseases of hypertension, obesity, or diabetes. We also recognize that those who survive COVID-19 continue to experience disparities in their loss of jobs or economic loss and their ability to recoup and regain uh, small businesses or other finances after surviving COVID-19, so that once in remission, additional challenges play for these groups. We recognize that those who may have lost jobs during COVID-19 are 57% of Hispanics, 41% of Blacks, versus 38% of Whites who lost either jobs or other economics during COVID-19. Uh, this is on top of the fact that after 2008, the last recession, Blacks had lost over 59% of their collective wealth. And so we're just beginning to recover when COVID-19 came. We also see these disparities in those who've been approved for PPP funding for small businesses as part of that recovery from COVID. We see that of the percent that had been accepted, almost 40%, that over 25% of those PPP loans were given to businesses that were white, 15% that were Latino, and only 5% that were black. So that wealth gap and ability to regain financially even after COVID shows a disparity with African-American populations. The current hotspot in the US is the Navajo Nation. 
and we recognize that that incorporates Arizona, parts of Utah, and parts of New Mexico. About 10% of Navajos on the reservation initially even lived without electricity, and as many as 40% had to haul their water or use outhouses. So hand washing, mitigation, and social distancing or isolation were already problematic even before the start of COVID-19. So because of this, we see that in Arizona, although Native Americans only make up 5% of that population, they're currently 20% of the COVID deaths. And whereas Latinos and whites have lower deaths than their actual percentage of population. Same for New Mexico, where the population is 11% of Native Americans, but 37% of the COVID deaths. And those ages ranges are between 20 and 69. So we're seeing the same younger um, persons succumbing to this illness. Mm-hmm.